بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this is your brother Gabriel Romani for another episode of mytaskia.com where we are tackling your problems specifically related to porn addictions so today we are talking about fantasies interesting question my husband has recently asked me to do stuff in bed, which I'm uncomfortable with. But he keeps insisting he wants me to wear like a school uniform and act like a little schoolgirl and call him daddy. <laughs> Is this a sign he might be a pedophile? Now, you might be laughing at this. I might be laughing, but it's real. So the issue of fantasies what is allowed and what is not allowed, what is good and what is not good, and so on and so forth. The questioner themselves, they say, I'm uncomfortable. Okay, so let's tackle the issue of fantasies first and foremost. In reality, according to statistical analysis and data from all walks of life, religions, you name it, people have fantasies. Where are these fantasies coming from? Some of them are just self-created. Some of them can be from shaitan. Some of them can be from seeing things, all right? So there's probably not one person who doesn't have these kind of thoughts coming in and fantasies coming into their mind. A lot of these fantasies are pretty much linked to stuff that they have seen, stuff that they have read, stuff that they've been exposed to, specifically in those formative stages. So a woman might have a fantasy about a specific thing because when she was young, this happened to her. For example, rape fantasies. It is reported about 65% of women have rape fantasies. You might want to say, why? Why is that such a thing? How come? It doesn't make sense. Does that mean women want to be raped? No. Psychologists try to explain it. It's a coping mechanism sometimes for those women who have experienced maybe abuse at a certain stage in their life. That does not mean that she wants to be raped. Actually, scientists agree that most fantasies, if not all, it's not really, it wouldn't be really natural to be played out or for people to actually experience them in real life or that people want to. Now, there's a fine line though there because as we can see most people do now in the world deviate from their natural fitra and disposition especially when it comes to things related to intimacy we can say that there's been stages where people kind of kept it in their head and now it's becoming and manifested into action because society is more acceptable fantasies have always existed uh, like dreams you cannot say that dreams that you're in control of them you might have a wet dream in that wet dream many things might happen things that you don't even control you wouldn't even think or even find attractive or stimulating but they just happen and indeed your body will release and will be stimulated and you're like shocked now we know a lot of dreams can be just from our mind or it can be from shaitan indeed shaitan has a huge role to play when it comes to fantasies especially things that are related to Haram. And he will keep pushing that on you till that fantasy becomes sustained throughout. And then it can lead to actually a plan and maybe even an action. So does that mean that a person is bad if they have fantasies, man or woman? And pausing here, women would probably have more fantasies. The way their brain works, according to studies again, they do create stories and expand them a bit more than men do. Men are more about what they see, who they would want to be with and they kind of move into action a bit faster for women which is a bit more dangerous now they kind of keep it in their mind and they expand it the, the story changes very detailed and so on again according to studies 1973 a book was released i'm not going to quote or name that because it is a very disturbing book of psychology and understanding female sexuality then another book was released not long ago by the same author to continue to explore that and my god the type of fantasies that females constructed in the mind was just shocking. Now, it is shocking also on men's side. Men will have all kinds of fantasies, but I would say there's a huge difference here. And most likely it's because of the fitra of the women and how they construct things, how they see things. Women look more at the bigger picture when it comes to relationships. They look at romance. They try to, they look at the, um, the context. Men will most likely focus on the act or the person itself. So we're different. And understanding this is very important, even for the dynamics of a relationship between a husband and a wife within halal, of course. So women will construct, hence the whole Fifty Shades of Grey, why it became so popular. Not just to that, but for example, word porn or 
romantic porn, like the novels. But indeed, I think the discussion was reignited within even the Muslim community when Fifty Shades of Grey was released. So a lot of the brothers, they were shocked. Like, how come? This is my wife. That she wants this. She wants to be abused. She wants to be uh, roughed up and so on. Not necessarily, but it does expose and show a very deep rooted desire to be dominated. And with the change of dynamics in society, with women being more empowered, their innate desire to be dominated and to be led by men is coming and being manifested through these fantasies, which they live through in these stories or these books or these uh, pornographical material. But to stick to our topic today, the issue of fantasy, and specifically this one that the husband is asking her, insisting to for her to wear a school uniform. So the scholars have deferred within, are you allowed to entertain a thought that is haram, for example, or a discussion that is haram? And specifically the question to the ulama was asked about fantasies. So there's a difference of opinion. However, it seems that it's more towards the haram because think about it. When you are talking and continuously feeding this thought into your mind, this seed, it can lead you to try to act because it's not enough. Your brain needs more stimulation out. The talk about it or the discussion about it, if it keeps going on, it's not enough. So you're going to go into different genres or different ideas because the, the story, the initial story maybe is not good enough anymore to get you going. But indeed, it's closer to the spirit of the Sharia to be careful with these things and not say it because it will lead someone to action. Having said that, does that mean that a couple cannot have fun and talk? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, when we talked about foreplay, he said words and kisses. It is very well established in science that the most important part, organ, in a female sexuality is her brain, her mind. Foreplay is very important to, to talk to her and so on and to prepare her. So there's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't mean that, okay, if we don't go into these all kinds of haram fantasies and discussions that we cannot have fun and enjoy things and say stuff. So when it comes to like doing weird haram, zina, this and this and this, obviously it's closer to the Sharia and to the spirit of Islam not to discuss these things, but other things like even like wearing different clothes or having some of the ulama have said there's no problem with that because you're not doing haram just if you want your wife to wear like a school uniform or there's of course a kink with the whole um, innocence and and so on but it can lead as i said if people feel like this is going to lead me towards haram there's something called said that there are and as the ulama mentioned and this is i'm not taking my own opinion here i'm this, I've discussed this with ulama, and you can look at the opinion of Islam Q&A as well on this issue. Yes, talking, for example, while they're talking things to a woman, explaining, um, describing things, this can really prepare her for climax. I encourage that. I think there is no difference of opinion on these things. Just brings them closer. They can be, you know, wild. They can be hot. They can do things. Alhamdulillah, the Sharia doesn't restrict you in that. But there's limits like to everything. If something is haram and something can make someone do something haram, it's going to come into a plan, then obviously you want to cut that as soon as possible. Specifically to this meeting is this guy a pedophile. I don't think he's a pedophile. I think it's just a king that's been built in him from whatever he's seen and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean he's a bad man. It's just a, a fantasy. But obviously, as you can see, uh, this fantasy could lead someone into sin. It's better to be careful. You know yourself. Is it in of itself haram to wear a uniform or to be considered to, to play and act like that? Not really, because you wouldn't do that in real life. But if you feel like you're going to move towards that, it's better, as I said, to cut it based on Siddu Tira. So the concept of uh, fantasies is something quite complicated. There's extremes, as you can see. Some people are like, you know, yeah, everything, talk, and, you know, visualize, discuss, no limits, no shyness, no nothing. And of course, shaitan is going to play with them, can lead them into action. And then there's the other extreme, like nothing. It's just like no talk, no nothing. And that's against the sunnah as well, because the Prophet said words and kisses. And knowing the female fitra, specifically the female fitra, she needs to be talked to. She needs to be explained and described and told that she's beautiful and attractive and this and this. And that can really make the relationship much, much better. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.